Okay, I am Anthony from Hasterson. Today we will be discussing details from uh, of the next generation of PlayStation, Xbox, and the rumors of a next generation Switch. I'm here with Corey Nevitis. Uh, N- How did, did I ruin it already? Nivid- <laughs> I, I should have. I should have um, done the thing, same thing I did with your last name, which is Esmeyer, mm-hmm. uh, and I should have phonetically spelled out Nevidius. Oh, I just said it. Cool. You just got it right there. <laughs> <Just, laughs> He's a Twitch cards. streamer. So, <laughs> Nvidia's on Twitch. Uh, then also, Alex Purple Rose Haslidge. Uh, he's a semi professional gamer. Uh, if the last name sounds familiar, it's because he's my dad's uncle's grandson. So, that, that's how we're related. And today we'll be discussing pretty much uh, the PlayStation 5, the Xbox series, and rumors about the Switch. So, hi, guys. How you doing? Uh, doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, uh, thanks for jumping in on this. So, uh, starting with Corey, uh, PlayStation Five or Xbox Series something? Uh, I'm actually going with both, but if I had to pick only one, I'd be on the PlayStation train. That's for sure. Okay, and then uh, wh- what are you thinking, Alex? Which one would you prefer? Um, I'm most likely going to end up just go for the PS Five. Okay, so um, are you guys going to get maybe the Xbox Series S like as a secondary? or I mean, personally, my primary is the Nintendo Switch, but uh, I, I plan to get the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series S, but like next year, like in Q2. So does anybody else do that, or are you just basically one system, that's it? Uh, I'm going to get both the Series X, actually, and the PS5, and my main is also Nintendo Switch, and I also have a gaming PC, but I just want to have all the hardware. (laughs) (laughs) Got to collect them all. Yep. They're your Pokemon. (laughs) Yes, very much so. (laughs) Alex, any secondary options? Um, No, I'm actually just going to stick with the PS5, and the reason behind the X not getting the Xbox X Series is actually a pretty good one. Um, they actually confirmed that all the exclusives for Xbox Series X are is coming to PC. So there's no point in me dropping another five hundred or three hundred dollars for the S or the X series. Why I can just play it on a computer that's a hundred times better than what they're releasing. Yeah, because yeah, I have uh, an Xbox One sad, and the fact that I could basically just move over everything I have on a discless system to a Xbox Series S, which is another discless system, uh, that actually works rather well for me. Uh, I would be able to play the new game still. And I, I don't, because I, I don't, if, if you ever see the shelf I have all my games on, I have no room for Xbox games, okay? So everything needs to be digital, uh, digital on the Xbox. Uh, but, but the PlayStation 5, if I'm getting one, is going to have a disc drive because I still want to be able to play my PlayStation 4 games on it. And then... Um, and then, of course, I do have a Nintendo Switch, which I, I just bought the new Mario All-Stars game. Phenomenal, by the way. Yeah, uh, I, I took a quick look at it. I didn't feel good uh, yesterday, but uh, I, I'm going to like gonna go through Mario 60. I've never played Galaxy, so I'll get to it, but I'm going to go through the other two games first because I really... I Actually, Sunshine's my favorite game, but I'm going off topic. So for anybody who's watching, let me show you on the screen here. Uh, this is the current stats for the Xbox Series uh, Series X and the PlayStation Five. Uh, Alex, if you could, could you read the Xbox Series X uh, components? For the CPU, we have the eighth uh, Zen two cores at three point eight gigahertz. Uh, we have a twelve teraflop at fifty two CTUs, uh, one point eight twenty five gigahertz of speed with a custom rdna2 uh 16 gigabytes of gddr gddr6 ram uh 10 gigabytes of download speed at 550 giga 560 gigabytes and 6 gigabytes at 336 gigabytes uh memory bandwidth it's also going to include a 4k uhd blu-ray drive with a one terabyte custom SSD and a one terabyte expansion card as well. Okay. And Corey, could you read the PlayStation 5, please? Uh, Absolutely. So in the PlayStation 5, we're going to be getting eight Zen 2 cores at 3.5 gigahertz, so a little bit lower than the Series X. 
and it'll be at a variable frequency. We're going to get 10.28 teraflops. So again, a little bit lower. 16 gigabytes of GDDR6, uh, 448 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth. So that is actually where we're looking at it being a little bit better. Uh, going into the optical drive, it's the same as the Series X with a 4K Blu-ray. And we've got a custom 825 gigabyte SSD and NVMe SSD expansion slot. Which is funny because Sony has the rights to the Blu-ray drive. So they're winning on all sides. It's it's funny for me. Um, <laughs> but uh, so here is a list of the Series X details. Uh, obviously, it's not the powerhouse as the Series X. But of course, it's diskless. Uh, 1440p uh, up to 120 frames. Uh, it has direct X ray tracing, variable rate shading, variable rate uh, refresh rate, uh, ultra low latency. I don't know why that's being specifically pointed out, but frankly, all of them are. Uh, custom 512 gig uh, hard drive. It's the SSD, uh, which I'm like, you're going to definitely need to get an external or an expansion. Uh, 4K streaming media playback and 4K upscaling for games, so which means that it is not true 4K but close enough. Right. It'll be like the PlayStation 4 Pro's checker box. So um, going back to the next question, Corey, um, are you pre-ordering and, or are you buying it the day of, or are you waiting for it to come out uh, like in the spring or how are you, how are you approaching this? Uh, so with PlayStation 5, I've already pre-ordered, had my money taken and everything. I'm good to go on launch day from Best Buy. I was in that uh, all that hoopla on uh, the day that Sony revealed the price and date and three hours of spamming my Best Buy card. <laughs> so that's wow, you got lucky. Done. Yeah. <laughs> yep, about three yep. o'clock in the morning, it finally let me through. It's because uh, my understanding is that bots went crazy in all the websites and were buying in mass. Yes. And yeah, and it was basically preventing anybody from getting access to the sites until they stopped. And if we do end up getting into the pre order situation with the PS5 later, I do have some things I want to say because there's a lot of shade being thrown at Sh yeah. excuse me, a lot of shade being thrown at Sony, and I think they did it the right way, honestly. Um, and then as far as the Xbox, I'm gonna be doing that financial plan they have where you can pay $30 a month because it includes Game Pass Ultimate. Oh, with the $35 for the Series X then? Yeah, the Series X. Uh, I think that's an amazing deal because you're basically going to be end up ending up paying the same price. It's just signing a contract saying, hey, I'm going to continue to subscribe to your service for two years. And I think you actually save a little bit of money on the console in the long run if you take in the value from Game Pass. But I'll be doing oh, yeah. that the day that pre-orders go live for that. Okay. So, Alex, how are you going to approach it? Are you buying, pre-ordering, buying at that release day, or are you going to wait? Uh, I'm probably most likely going to wait, only because as Xbox and PlayStation have both had the problems of on release, they've both had problems off rip. Just off rip. Consoles crashing, you know, just not working in general. I think I'm going to give it a little bit more time before they... Bef um, before I pre-order or even buy it of uh, day of, because like, like he, uh, Nvidia's, um, uh, there was a whole, it, like no one could get in on pre-orders. Cause you weren't, if you weren't there in the, in bright early in the morning, you weren't getting one. This is just plain as day until they restock on, uh, pre-orders. But like, I still have the first ever first gen PlayStation. Surprisingly, it hasn't broken on me yet. <laughs> Um, but a lot of people have had issues with the first gens when they dropped out and it's the same thing with the Xbox X series, the, the fat or the, yeah, the fat Xboxes, they, you know, they just came out with problems off rip and, you know, they died or they've overheated because there's just no, um, room for exhaust or even cooling in general. Yeah. I, I used to buy on release. And then I got burned three different times, and I, I don't now. I wait for them to get out, you know, get rid of that um, release window version, and then bring out the new, the new updated version that fixes whatever problems there were. Uh, and then the software is updated. I, I just, I, I, you throw a lot of money at these things, and the one thing you don't want to have to do is stop playing for a month, whatever, for it to be repaired 
or for you to have to buy another one. I, I, I went through that with the PlayStation 3. I went through that with the Nintendo Wii. I went through that with um, uh, the Nintendo, the original Nintendo. I, I don't have the patience to stop playing for a month. So I'm I'm going to just I'm gonna wait like March maybe at the earliest I'll get one of them and then maybe I'll get the other one a little bit later. Obviously my preference is PlayStation first, and then the Xbox Series S. Um, so then it brings up it's something that Corey mentioned. Actually, you know what, Corey, did you have more on the 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 issues with the pre-ordering that you wanted to talk about? Okay, so I've seen this a lot throughout YouTube and all over the internet that people are very upset that. Microsoft decided that, and sorry, Microsoft, Sony decided that they were just going to open the floodgates randomly when they said, uh, I believe it was Jeff Keighley was podcasting and he was interviewing Jim Ryan and Jim Ryan said, you're going to have plenty of time to pre-order the PS5. It's not going to be an issue. And Walmart decided to open pre-orders a day early without any notice. And then all the other retailers followed suit. I am not, 100% confident in saying that Sony didn't have something to do with that. And I think it's a good thing that they did because something we've seen with the NVIDIA 3080 video card and its pre-orders the other day, it get swarmed by bots because they're given a set time. This is what time the pre-orders go live. People just set their bot, walk away. They don't have to worry about it. But with these going live out of nowhere, a lot of people were able to get a console that probably would not have been able to get a console. Oh, I see. I never thought of that side of it. That makes that makes a lot of sense. Kind of secretly releasing it so people have a chance. Mm-hmm. At least th- that's the way that I see it. Now I am a masochist, so I sat there and spammed my cart for three hours. <laughs> but um, Best Buy, all these retailers, their their websites just were not prepared. Yeah, I, I think one of the biggest problems is them not limiting it. And they really should limit mm-hmm. it to one or two. I had the um, so. A couple of months ago, Hasbro released the DeLorean as a Transformer. And it, it, it goes on sale at noon, whatever, on Walmart's website. Walmart didn't set any limits. Uh, nobody could access to the site for the first hour. And then all of a sudden, they were sold out. And come to find out, people are selling them on eBay. These things sold for 30 bucks. They were selling them for $300, $600. And then I've already seen on eBay the um the, the 3080s going for 1700 mm-hmm. and they call and then the, there's people actually selling what they call the paper edition which if you know anything about it it's the, basically the cardboard that looks like the uh for and they I'm like oh my god please let people read descriptions because people are actually buying these things and they're getting legit ones mm-hmm. and they're going to get screwed and it happens every year like people will sell the boxes for a game system for an exorbitant amount of money and uh, then people go like, why didn't, why is the system not in here? I think this happened. I don't, and Alex, well, you know, you guys are both local. I, I don't know. It was, I think it was um, a couple of years ago, a little kid for Christmas was supposed to get a, uh, a PlayStation 4 or something. And he gets it for Christmas and, and his parents didn't look inside. It was a brick inside. And um, they, they went to eBay after the kid opened it up and found a brick instead of the console. And um, it was a whole thing in the news. And I'm trying to remember what eBay says. Well, it clearly said in the description that it's a brick. The box is empty. And and then um, I think a local business actually bought them the game, the system. But uh, people are shady is, is what that is. It's greedy and shady. And so you got to be careful about what you read. and, and the Because if they misadvertise it and it's not on you, but if they're telling the truth and you don't pay attention, that is on you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 100%. Uh, Alex, any horror stories? No, nah, I mean, it probably Has... saved them from the console actually breaking on them in the first place. Yeah. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, the one thing I do miss is, like, um, being able to, like, I, I've waited in line at night for a minute release of a console. Uh, I Last one I was there for was both the PlayStation 4 and the xbox uh the one and uh, i have so much fun i don't know about anybody else but i had so much fun doing that and th- those are not even an option now you can't I, at least as far as i'm aware no one's going to be able to do that maybe gamestop but i did uh, ask them actually huh? they, said, they said until we're not in a covid world they're not doing midnight releases oh anymore. 
wow, because like I, I know like Walmart's not, and probably Best Buy's not. So th- th- that fun is just kind of taken away, mm-hmm. and that it's a fun experience to have, but eh. I w- I'm a little bit disappointed because this is the first time I'll be getting a Sony console on launch day. Uh, growing up, I was always a Nintendo guy, so I didn't usually buy Sony and Xbox. I also bought the 360 way after the fact to play with friends, but I'm a little disappointed. I wanted in on that release day hype. And now I'm just going to be waiting for Best Buy to ship it to me in the mail. Yeah, it's actually, I've bought a lot of games and that's how they come to me now. You go to like GameStop and you, I don't know if anybody's noticed, at least the ones locally here, they're like kind of stripping out the game part and putting in more merchandise. So like when you go in, you may not necessarily get the selection that you're used to. <laughs> so that's that's a little disappointing when you're really looking for something kind of specific. I mean, I could, I could talk for on a whole separate topic with GameStop for hours about how I think that they're going under and they won't exist in two years, but I mean, that is, like I said, that's a whole separate topic. Oh, that is a common belief. Uh, and we'll go into this tangent because I do like talking about it. Um, like they're closing 400 more stores uh, through the end of this year. And I went to one of the uh, local stores, and I'm not going to name the store because I don't want the manager to get in trouble. Uh, he basically told me he's ready for the store to close. He's like, he's just waiting for the X to fall. Uh, he's been he's been a in, an employee of GameStop for over a decade. He's just ready to go because he's tired of the stress. Only people that are left there are the people that are going to go down with the ship. That's my he, belief. Yeah, because he he's it's basically him, his his assistant manager and an SGA that he shares with another store and he's just ready for it to be over and the funny thing is the the other manager in the same city uh, she already quit she's like I, I'm done like, Smart. <laughs> she, yeah she checked out um, I caught her at Walmart the other day and she was telling me how much happier she is not being there because of the way they treat the employees and that's a sad fact but yeah with everything going digital with digital being an actual straight up option now for this is the second or third year uh, on a console uh, yeah there's going to be nothing left for GameStop to sell other than merchandise and frankly you can buy uh those big headed chibi things uh uh, whatever they're called oh the Funko Uh, Funko Pops Pops. yeah you can buy those anywhere yeah you can you can buy the um the specialty clothing almost anywhere too uh, although I get Think Geek is a GameStop brand, but y- you can get stuff elsewhere. So they they really don't have a niche anymore. They're they're everything is everywhere. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So Game Pass versus the PlayStation Collection. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard, but basically uh, the PlayStation Collection is for PS5 owners uh, who got PlayStation Plus, and they get access to probably some of the best Sony uh, released and possibly third edi- uh, third party company stuff but the top games of the playstation 4 era era to download and play on the playstation 5 and then of course game pass just got ea play added to it and um they're talking about um i guess kind of merging the streaming x cloud into it so i what do you think is the best deal Corey? What what's the best deal there's a couple factors that need to be taken into consideration there, I feel like, that haven't been talked about a whole lot. And one of them is that we've been told that backwards compatibility with the PlayStation 5, playing PlayStation 4 games, that's about it. They said it play PS4 games. Is it only games that are in this collection? Because they haven't detailed that. If it has to be digitally released and I can't just put in my PS4 disc, we're going to have a problem. And that's going to be a huge consumer base problem. I'm not the only one who feels that way, I'm sure. Uh, as far as value between the two, though, I feel like Xbox has the better value as far as Game Pass and xCloud because you can play it on multiple devices. You can you can stick your phone on a controller with a little mount and you can play a bunch of games. And that's out right now. Uh, oh, xCloud, yeah. And then Game Pass on top of that, I, I take advantage of game pass heavily on my pc and i mean every xbox first party release that's coming out yes it's not going to be console exclusive but it's going to be on game pass and i can pay five dollars a month and i can play all the xbox games so i think that's no contest okay because i said i thought game pass was 15 dollars a month which included ea play and xcloud 
that's with Xbox Live. If you oh, that, okay, that's with Xbox Live. Okay, I was more talking from a PC perspective. I apologize. Uh huh. Yeah, because uh, well, the PlayStation Network, which is where a PlayStation Collection would be, is mm-hmm. sixty dollars a year. But admittedly, and I agree with you, the Xbox Game Pass is just there's so much there. Um, not just first party, there's second, third party games. It, it's just a lot better selection, and they're adding every month. It's kind of like the modern equivalent to what the Switch offers. Right. And yeah. the thing to keep in mind is if PlayStation continues to give us the uh, the equivalent of games of gold that Xbox does, PlayStation has definitely been in the lead as far as giving out free games. I do not get those Xbox games that come out free every month, but when you compare the Xbox games to the PlayStation games, like Fall Guys <laughs> compared to whatever Xbox game out this month, again, no contest in, th- in that department. I think if we're talking from a new releases perspective, Xbox is better. But if we're talking about free games per month and overall cost, I feel like I get better bang for my buck with Sony. So what's your thoughts there, Alex? Um, I mean, I'm already PlayStation plus member, so it's, it's, and I mean, even you have to have it to play online. So no matter what you do, if you hop on PS five, you're going to have these, you're going to have the collection anyways. So, but like with Xbox, I'm pretty sure you can buy the game pass without even being having Xbox live. I'm pretty sure. Um, well, oh, I mean, hold on. Xbox live is just to play online, right? Yeah. Yes. It's just to play online. Okay. And a majority of the games in the Xbox Game Pass are either multiplayer or single player. And if you're one who's bigger in the multiplayer, but you have Game Pass, you're also going to pay for online either way. So, again, like he said, um, PlayStation, you are getting more more for your buck than you would Xbox uh, Game of the Month because they just give you some third party <laughs> game that you have no idea you've never heard of. And you're just like, well this is really the game of the month and it's like $5 on the store while in the PlayStation plus collection, they do, they, I mean, again, the game pass is more um, superior compared to the PlayStation plus collection, but they also did release the amount, uh, the certain games so far that is coming out with the PlayStation plus collection. So, um, so I, I feel like asking this question is like, duh, but the best release lineup, obviously, it's the PlayStation, at least right now. I saw Final Fantasy 16, and I was sold. Yeah, because <laughs> well, now the other thing that got me was I, I was on board fully to get a PlayStation 5 sooner than later just to get the new Spider-Man game. But then when they announced it was also coming on PlayStation 4, now I'm not in a rush to get it anymore. I feel that sentiment greatly. Um there's no other way to really put it other than I believe that Sony either lied to us or intentionally misled us to get us to buy into the FOMO mindset and pre-order the console as quickly as possible and color me a fool because they got me and they got my money already. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I just uh, I mean, it was the only game I was looking forward to. So now I don't have to rush. Uh, but again, I've had such bad luck with new releases on consoles. I just. Uh, it, it, it was the one thing that was going to make me go, you know what, maybe the fourth time I'll, I'll get a console and not have a problem, but it's coming on to the PlayStation 4 now. I don't even have to worry about that thought. Uh, what's your thoughts on that, uh, Alex? I mean, in reality, it's like, okay, so do I get it for PS4 or do I get it for PS5? Do I sacrifice quality or do I sacrifice gameplay? I mean, mo- I mean in general, do I sacrifice I'm pretty sure it's ten dollars more for PS5 if I'm not mistaken. PS5 yeah, they, and they Xbox said some games series would be yeah. would be um, ten dollars in your average game. So you know, say when the new Final Fantasy comes out, it's like ten bucks more on on PlayStation Five than it is on if it came out for PS4. Um, it's like, would you spend more for the quality, or are you to just say, hey, I want to see how this game plays out, and I'm just gonna buy it on PS4. Personally, me, I still never finished the first Spider-Man, and after watching the trailer for the second one, I really want to play it. I like Spider-Man a lot, but in the end run, I'll eventually get it and play it, no matter what, if it's for PS4 or PS5. Whatever copies on the shelf, I'm not picky. 
And speaking of Marvel, I, I the more I see of the Avengers game, the more I'm kind of like, you know what? I think I'm going to get that, but I think I'm going to wait for like a, a game of the year or something. I know it's supposed to be a live service, so there may never be a game of the year, but one where the, maybe the price goes down a little bit or other or the character DLC comes out or something. I don't know. Uh, it looks interesting enough that may be comparable to Spider-Man. Uh, I've seen a lot of reviews that really like it. It's just, um, um, it just isn't exactly where I want it to be for me to want to buy it outright. I don't know if anybody else feels that way. It just there, it 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 feels kind of like based on discussions and re- reviews that maybe the the Marvel's Avengers game is more like Destiny than it is more like Spider Man. I'll let you respond to that one first because I have a hot take on this one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I okay, so I don't own the game. I played the I played the betas. And I think it was pretty fun. I mean, it's like it's almost like Mar- Marvel Ultimate Alliance, but more advanced. But it only focuses on the Avengers. And eventually, I'm pretty sure. I like I guess I like played through the beta. That's all I know. And I'm like, well, maybe it'd be cool if they added more Avengers and continued sub stories or added more story to it. But I'm like, I have no experience on the game whatsoever. I just. I played the beta and I thought the beta was cool. I like playing as Hulk and running around. Hulk smash everything. Okay, so what what did you have there, Corey? All right, so I want to remind you too of a little game called Destiny. And oh, no. when Destiny came out, that game was very buggy. You could shoot into a loot cave, and items would just drop. Uh, disconnects game breaking bugs all over the place poorly optimized because they wanted to get their live service rolling and they had to get it out the door and i feel like for a square enix game this is just sad because it is literally destiny all over again the game is buggy it doesn't work the way it's intended it it personally doesn't interest me that much anyway i mean i'm i love the avengers and i love marvel but i saw this game in like the characters don't look like the movie characters, and I don't understand why. Well, I think it might have to do with using their actual faces. It's like a, a copyright or licensing thing, so they can't just use their looks. I, I understand that, but with a title this big, I feel like if they, they should have paid for it, they should have shelled the money out, especially right. if your live service and ongoing. Uh, as far as that goes, I am not going to buy this game until it has gotten its first set of patches, at least probably farther than that, just because I feel like I'll be able to pick this game up for $20. I mean, look at Anthem of all games. <laughs> Anthem's in an even worse spot than either of these games are. It's like, yeah, it's $2. I get Anthem at game for free. <laughs> it's $2 at Target. Yeah. No, it's I've... being advertised at $2 and it's like a year old. That's it's, um... sad. This is the same thing with Battlefield 1, actually. I went to a Walmart, and it was literally Battlefield 1, $1. Wow. Well, I got uh, I got Anthem for free. And then, um, you know, back like, um, what was that? Um, the one game that is now really good, but it was, it was they promised uh, from Hello Games, they promised that the, the uh, going from planet to planet and everything is whatever. Um, oh, oh no Man's well, Sky. yeah, No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky, right. I got it for $5. And I was like, okay, um, that is awesome. Five dollars. I'm cool. Uh, just to explore space. Uh, but then that they did that release, their first major patch, though. And just I would have paid sixty dollars for that game after because uh, it, 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 it's the, the difference is night and day. And then they just did that the next, uh, the newest patch now where there's underwater. Uh, there's new creatures or the multiplayer is filled out. It, it's a fantastic game now. And I got it for $5. I paid $60 on launch day, got upset within three hours and have never launched the game again. If I'm being well, honest with you. See, I played Anthem uh, through the first mission and it crashed my PlayStation. That was the end of that. So <laughs> you saw all the game had to offer. Don't worry. <laughs> I just really like the flight, like Iron Man thing going on, but yeah, it 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 it's like oh, oh they need to fix that game. Yeah, it was like the way they tra- the way they put the game out in like trailer. The game looked amazing, and then came launch day, it just okay. It came out the microwave. <laughs> okay, 
<laughs> okay, so now let's say Halo released with the Xbox. Would that change your mind about uh, what you would get? No. No? I mean, okay. my, my mind really can't change other than not getting something, so... I mean, nope. <laughs> it would make me more excited for the Xbox, honestly. I mean, I never... I I tried to play Halo 1 and 2. Uh, I just never really got into it. I'm not really into first-person shooters to begin with. Like, I rarely... Um, I like Fortnite because it's a third person, but what was the, I try, I did call of duty for a little while and I just call of duty. Isn't for me. I, I did, um, what was it? I want to say apex legends. Uh, I actually, for some reason or somehow magically became really good at the game after a few months. And then I was like, you know what? I'm good. You know, like, because all shooting games start to feel the same to me. So I just, it, it's probably why I never got into halo and why I never continued playing call of duty or any of those things. Uh, but I'm sure there are people out there who were wavering on the Xbox, heard that it was being uh, Halo was being postponed, and then said, "You know what? I'm going to go to PlayStation Five." Absolutely, I think that the that that genre of games is very reliant on having friends to play the game with. I know for me, I didn't pick up Halo until Halo Three when I was I was a freshman in college when that came out, and that's why I bought my 360 was literally so I could play Halo with my friends. And I've recently gotten the Master Chief Collection because it came on Game Pass. And I tried playing it with a friend and I have no skill at that game anymore. Um, FPS games are very difficult. And I'm the type of person that if I'm not good at a game, I don't play it. So um, I'm going to give New Halo a shot, but it's not a make or break for me. Alex, Halo experiences. I mean, I, when I got my first 360, I was probably 10 years old. I've been playing video games since I was four, and I'm only 20 years old now. Um, give or take. I mean, Halo, when I got a 360, it wasn't like on my mind. I was just like, yo, I, I got an Xbox 360. I'm so excited to play, you know, playing Guitar Hero World Tour when it came out. Yes. The, the TMNT game that first dropped on 360, it was like, Man, I was so excited. And then over time, hanging out with my best friend, he's like, yo, you got you to try Halo or be with my cousins. You know, you got to try Modern Warfare, Call of Duty. And it was like, oh, I got into those games. Like, yo, this is so much fun. So then, like, my first ever uh, Halo game was Halo 2. I was like, yo, this is so much fun. The f I hated the library with all the flood just continuously spawning. It drove me nuts. Then I moved on to Halo 3. I was like, man, the multiplayer in this is so much fun. Then I stopped after Halo Reach because after Halo Reach, I was like, y'all just tore my heart out. After you killed all the Noble Sixes, I said, I'm done. I was like, I hate you guys. You done made me mad. Then Halo 4 came out. I was like, ah, uh, I don't want it. It kind of, eh, a lot of people, it was getting mixed reviews, so I didn't really... I never bought into the game. Then Halo 5 came out, and I was like, what is this? This is not Halo. <laughs> this is not the game I used to know. Used to know, And I'm just like, all right, whatever. So then the Master Chief Collection came out. I never bought it. I didn't buy it until I had a PC. I actually bought it maybe a couple months ago. Actually, no. I bought it when they first dropped pre-orders for the game on PC, on Steam. So I bought it, and then they just kind of – gradually added all the halos in and now i think the only halo they're missing is halo 4 because they recently just released halo 3 on it i mean i go back and i play it here and there with a few friends but i'm like i'm though doing the worst and they're carrying me with like 20 30 kills and i'm like i can't do this anymore as you know i i moved when i was in college i moved to csgo i was a semi-professional csgo player at the time Played for a year. After that, I left. I was sponsored by Red Bull. And then I was like, well, there's other games to move on to, such as Rainbow Six Siege is the game that I greatly follow. And I, they, I've i been there since it first ever came out. I played it, played the beta. I was like, yo, this is about to be the best game. And then I was like, when the release came out, I just kind of looked around. I was like, what am I playing? This isn't what I played. <laughs> the, the whole game was just a was just, just a whole switch around. I'm like, okay. But I continued playing it for 
every season. And then so far we're on the Shadow Legacy season, which they actually released um, Sam Fisher as an operator to play. Oh, I saw that. I saw that. Uh, The old man Fisher. And I watched the trailer. I said, yo, they make him look just, oh, this is Sam Fisher. So it was just, it was fun. And then I continue to play it now. And I, all I do is play ranked every day, at least, at least get maybe five, six hours of gameplay on it. But yeah. Okay. So, um, unless we're anything else for this topic, I'm going to move on to the Nintendo switch. All right, let's do it. Okay. So, uh, rumors are abound about the Nintendo switch. Um, now the rumors outside, uh, that I've seen two. Okay, so the first one is a 1440p TV capable with a, maybe a 1080 screen docked. Uh, and then the other one was that they told uh, developers, Nintendo, uh, told developers, get ready for 4K. And then that, um, so get ready for 4K. And uh, that, that kind of leaves open why specifically 4K, because the, the current system, the current chip doesn't handle that. They would, they would have to switch to maybe something more substantial. Uh, so people are wondering if the 4K switch is perhaps a TV box. So we go from switch light to the switch to the switch TV, maybe. So, uh, starting with Corey, uh, wh- what do you think? What what would what would be the best option for you? Uh, what do you think is more of a realistic approach that maybe Nintendo's going with? Um, I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, revisions always happen for Nintendo, as with the new comp- uh, both Microsoft and uh, PlayStation started adopting the revisions thing more recently. So, but Nintendo almost every year revision. So, go ahead, Corey. What, what's your thoughts on the Switch? Uh, I think that there's some credibility to both of those rumors. I definitely think we're going to see a new Switch next year. Uh, They've hinted at it more and more and more. And like you said, they've told developers to be ready for 4K. Now, as far as that's concerned, I think that the TV Switch is more likely because we have the flagship Switch that can do both. We have the Switch Lite that does only handheld. And it just makes sense to me that the next switch would be TV only, especially if it's going to be pushing performance and in their investors meeting this week, it was brought up that they want to push cutting edge hardware more. Now Uh, they've been taking a backseat on that over the past generations where they were focused on games that were fun to play, uh, not necessarily top of the line hardware, trying to keep costs down, but now they want to compete because they have their users back and the switch has done great for them doing that. I think the the TV box is most likely, but I could see them doing a new handheld uh, possibly with the 1080p on the uh, exo screens that they've gotten a hold of recently. And furthermore, I just think that the joy cons need a revision really badly because they are not very well designed and they don't hold up and, There's those lawsuits going on. Uh, Those are ongoing. I think I saw another one got opened up in the past two weeks. Uh, Other than that, I just think that they're going to get that new NVIDIA Tegra chip in there with the DLSS 2.0, and that's going to be what enables them to push their games to 4K. Alex, thoughts? Uh, I mean, they did did say stuff. Um, There are rumors. But I'm not 100% sure. I mean, usually they release something along the lines with Xbox and PlayStation. It's a little pushed back. But I think mostly what they'll do is they're not going to release a new handheld, but they're going to release a more advanced Nintendo Switch because they just released Super uh, Mario 3D All-Stars and All-Stars in general. Um, But I I generally think they're just going to work with another company to help boost up their cpu processors because the nintendo switch just gets hot in general so a lot a lot of it needs to be worked around it needs to be fixed as as far as a box i don't think they're gonna go back into the in the traditional okay this is a console hand since they're gonna keep with their fluctuation of the mixed breed because they're like hey you know this is the next generation of gaming it is a 
console, but is also portable at the same time, which they could always do that. Well, I mean, they did, but that's how they're going to work around with it. Um, give or take, I feel like they could work with NVIDIA. NVIDIA is hands down one of the best companies out there and just makes a monster of a switch. I most likely probably call it, a, I mean, we could call it the Nintendo Switch Pro for whatever they're going to make it or name it. They're probably so stick with something generic. Um, but again, they could work with other companies to help boost their uh, switch and make it a lot better. You know, a better, cooler intake, better processor, better start off with storage. Cause then you got to go out and fork up maybe like 60 bucks on a 250 gigabyte uh, SSD or not SSD, but a, uh, micro SD card because your switch only holds like what 30 gigs. Yeah, uh, yeah, I was gonna say, um, what what would they have to do to convince you? Because you you both own a switch, right? Yes, I've I own two three. actually. <laughs> well, you're a hoarder. Okay, so um, <laughs> what would it take for you to go? You know what? I want the new switch because in naming convention, if they did the 1440p switch, I think they would call it the Nintendo Switch XL, like they did with the or the new Nintendo Switch, like they did with the 3DS. But would would you go for that 10 or the 1440p, or would you say, okay, you know what? I, if they come up the the, um, the 4K version, that's when I'll buy another switch. Corey, any thoughts? Uh, uh, what I is going to get you to buy a new Switch? I mean, as far as everything's concerned, I think <laughs> I, I made it pretty obvious at the beginning. If it comes out, I'm going to buy it. So, <laughs> and then if Nintendo announces it, I'll have it yesterday, <laughs> <laughs> or at least have it pre-ordered. I should say. Okay, so Alex, you're going to continue the hoarding, or you're actually going to say, say, "I'm done." Um, no, it's. More so, what can you convince me with? I'm not going to just go out and buy it because I'm a fanboy. And I understand that a lot because when it comes to PC parts, oh, I want I want to buy a new part every time it comes out. Uh, the new RTX series, I wanted to buy one so bad, but I don't have the money to fork over for one. I don't have a and, computer that can even run one. <laughs> my Oh, well, already the 30 series, eat power up with no problem they already run at 300 watts off rip that's half of my power supply unit so i have to go buy a new one just for my computer to handle it mm -hmm. uh, it's just it i would have done it but it would cost me even more to upgrade it but going that's kind of going off topic for the nintendo switch what games are you going to offer me that can play in 4k that i can't play on my computer what a additional add-ons could you add to the console itself to make it worth buying again that i already have three of them it's like okay do i get um more storage in it do i get what is my cap in frames i know it's i know a game can be played in 4k but it also depends on how many frames it can put out is it going to lag on me while i play because it can't handle uh, generating that onto the screen. Um, you know, what, what basically what will persuade me to buy it is the real question. See now uh, you, you have three switches. My, my brain is going, you have a switch in your bedroom, a switch in your living room and a switch in the bathroom. I'm trying to figure out where, which switch is where, um, <laughs> uh, anyway, um, I did have one thing, one more thing I wanted to Go add ahead. onto there. Uh, as far as what they can sell you with, they, they're going to sell you with exclusives. And the thing to keep in mind, while I don't think this is necessarily going to be the route that they take, they have done it before with Xenoblade Chronicles 3D, for example, with the new Nintendo 3DS. They release a new Nintendo Switch and put a game on it that only plays on that system they've shown they're not afraid to do that before and the 3ds had a pretty healthy community size or consumer base i should say and they put that game out there and it doesn't run on the old one and then they did other games that way too so i could see them doing that and that'll definitely convince some people yeah I, it's just um i'm because I'm, I'm thinking about the new nintendo switch or the new 3d 3ds xl whatever um 
like they, they they did a couple of games on there, but I'm trying to think of any of them or something that that broke some records of sales. Like, did it make it worth doing? But as we all know, they did this continue the game uh, the 3DS line, so it's done. Yes. So there, yeah. So unless a third party releases another game on it, no, no more, no more is coming out from Nintendo. So uh, I feel like you are right, Corey. They would have to release something so fantastic, like the like uh, what, what they're talking about, um, Super Mario, uh, whatever the one that was just I just I already forgot the I name. Think. I never played. Yes, uh, and then release number two exclusively on that new Switch. Or maybe the next version of Mario Kart, or maybe the next version of Smash Brothers. Or I got a better one for you, then. Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 being exclusive to new Nintendo Switch. Yeah, I, that would definitely grab some uh, attention. That would that would make some sales. Sold console 1 with Breath of the Wild, sell console 2 with Breath of the Wild 2. That makes perfect sense. Um yeah, so, I mean, and that, that, that brings in the other thing of uh, game companies don't really do packing games anymore, but I feel like we should return to that for for basically, uh, I, I, I don't know. Okay, so let's look at it this way. Nintendo has made it well known that their audience is not the hardcore gamer. Uh, Sony is, that's, that's who they want, and then Microsoft is now transitioned to somewhere in the middle. So they're about quote-unquote entertainment, Rather than just strictly gaming, although um, I guess in this the Xbox Series line, uh, they're not doing anything doing with TVs. There's no DVR. There's nothing like that anymore. But they want to make sure that you can play from your TV to your computer to your cell phone. They want it to be an all interconnected network. And again, that's with xCloud. So uh, the approach that Xbox is doing is Basically, now they they basically created a handheld market for themselves. Just get a nice smartphone, and you can play their games on the uh, X Cloud uh, through your smartphone. Uh, they they've done the the console, they've done computers. Um, the question, I guess, would be then because Xbox is doing so many divergent forms of getting access to games, and now it requires you to stream the whole time. Do we see that competing with Nintendo or Sony at the same level? I think it just divides up the audience. I have to agree. I think it divides up the audience. But I'll also throw out there that Nintendo actively doesn't try to compete with the other two companies. Or at least that's the stance that they give, is that they're doing their own thing. They want to bring fun experiences to everybody. And their whole business model is not about trying to take on Sony or Microsoft. And as far as Sony versus Microsoft... I feel like Microsoft has been so far behind for so long that they're not trying to compete with anybody either. And they're trying to do their own thing with their Game Pass and xCloud. And we're going to get to a point where we see that Microsoft continues to have hardware, but I don't know that they're going to be in the hardware race after this generation. This may be it for them. What are your thoughts on uh, Microsoft diversifying? Um, I mean, yeah, it's it's clear as day as who it's the very divided uh group. You've got your you know your Xbox and you've got your PlayStation. You've got two communities who clash head on head about who's better, who's got better this, better that, and then you've got Nintendo, which they actually only really focus on the family side. They're they're not made clearly. Nintendo does not try and compete with Sony or Xbox. They are focusing on, okay, what can we do to make this more of a family-friendly experience for kids and adults alike? While you've got your Sony, who's just trying to one-up Xbox. And the way Xbox is now, I don't think Xbox is more so trying to fight with Sony, but they're also they're trying to work with Sony. And I feel like Xbox and Sony could make can become can make more profit and focus more on the consumer if they work together, you know, cross play or, you know, working together in some sort to create something to make it a, not a divided group, but as in something in one, because in the end run, we all, we all hold the tag gamer above our head. See, now to add to what you just said and what Corey said, Microsoft is actually taking a, well, it has for the last year or two, 
a, a super effort to make sure that they can put games on other systems. Um, so they, just recently, Microsoft got approved for a couple of games on the iStore, I guess, uh, the Apple Store. And then they've been releasing games on the Switch. Mm-hmm. And so they, they, Microsoft has really done the effort to try to get everywhere. I guess right now, other than some type of technology share, um, so, Sony and Microsoft aren't seeing eye to eye, but Nintendo is on board with Microsoft. And I think the way Microsoft sees it is it's a way for a Japanese co- a company to get them more exposure in a market in which they're very weak. Absolutely, 100%. And I think that we're going to see xCloud come to the Switch, personally. I think uh, that, that's a high possibility. Yeah, because uh, last year, the rumor was that um, the micro- Microsoft... Uh, uh, the the ecosystem would be on the switch nintendo said they would not allow that which which is it means it's not going to happen um i don't think x cloud is going to end up on the switch either uh because i think the concern is just like with epic and apple and google the ma- the matter of transactions and how that gets handled uh but i think it would be more of um individual experiences being put on to the switch or it's it's um, whatever comes next uh, because Microsoft is really trying to diversify that portfolio. And uh, what are they like a multi-trillion dollar company at this point? So mm-hmm. they can throw all the money they it, they'll add it. They, they want. And I think it's a good thing. Um, my brother, um, Matthew, he enjoys the switch and the fact that, that Minecraft is on there is the bees knees to him. So, I, I, they have they, 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 you're combining these two worlds and I, I think it's the best of both I mean because with Microsoft pivoting to the more casual gamer and opening up their marketplace to not just the Switch to the PC more mm-hmm. and, it, and they've actually convinced Nintendo to ex- expand beyond uh, just their consoles now they're doing mobile and they were talking about releasing a couple games in Steam I don't know if they have yet but uh, that is spectacular that the influence of an American company is saying to this Japanese company, you need to find new ways. And it's rubbing off of them. Sony is just so stuck in their own ecosystem that they, they're resistant to everything. And, and I don't remember which one of you said it. They really did not want to do crossplay because they thought if they did it, somehow that'd be a gateway to people leaving their ecosystem to go to the others. But it's not really how that works. So I, I, I just... I, I feel like at some point we're going to get a convergence of where Nintendo and Microsoft are going to work together on, on, a, on a, not necessarily merge as a companies, but to be so connected that you would know one and then you would thus know the other. And again, probably more relevant in Japan. I do want to touch on that cross play topic you just mentioned. Uh, I do want to point out that PlayStation was resistant to cross play. Yes, that is true. But if you look in the Xbox 360 generation, Xbox was the one that was not willing to do crossplay, and Sony was going to them trying to make it happen. I think it's entirely based on who's in the lead. And Sony didn't want to do it because they didn't have to do it. And they're coming around to it because they understand that the gaming landscape is changing. And I that honestly, what you said about Nintendo putting a game on Steam. I haven't heard anything about that. That is complete news to me, and that's amazing to hear. Uh, I think that'd be really great. I know we've seen Octopath Traveler go, but that's not Nintendo. That's no, no. Square Enix. Yeah, this is it's a, it's a third party. Yeah, continue on, Corey. Um, is oh, sorry. <laughs> Furthermore, I wanted to point out that of the Xbox games that we have gotten on the Switch, I think that it is. That we've gotten some pretty quality games between Cuphead and both Ori games. We did just get Ori and Will of the Wisps the other day. Um, phenomenal games. Go check them out if you haven't played them and you own a Switch or an Xbox or a PC, I guess. But I want to see more of that coming from Microsoft. And I know that it's highly unlikely that xCloud comes, but it's a nice thought. I know, like, we had Project Rainfall that was being looked at a while ago. Nintendo shot that down. I, it doesn't surprise me to hear that they've shot down the X Cloud idea, but it was a cool rumor. Yeah, uh, it, I just because I because when you, you see what they do, like Apple said, you cannot have X Cloud as a 
a ecosystem on its own, you must submit each individual game. So basically the app, as far as Apple is concerned, it contains one game and then uh, it has the, you know, the microtransaction, all that stuff built into it that, you know, make sure it feeds through Microsoft or Apple, I should say, before whatever left goes to Microsoft. And their, their, their concern was that by putting more than one game on the app, uh, that they would somehow be unable to moderate accurately because maybe different games have different ratings. So they were concerned about content. I say concerned with air quotes. Um, so I think if, at least on Apple's end, it was more about control than it was profits because I feel like, well, you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, well, I, I get it. If, if it's just basically the normal X Cloud on Apple, and then I guess Microsoft could be sneaky, but when it's just one game at a time, it's 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 less easy to hide, I guess. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know what? Since we did talk about it, I'm I'm bringing it up. Uh, Epic Games and the uh, the lawsuit against Apple and Google, and then Apple counter suing. Uh, start with Alex. Do you have any thoughts on that? Because it just looks to me like two or three trillion dollar companies just being jerks. Um, I actually didn't know anything about that. Not you know lie. nothing about Fortnite. Nothing. I absolutely hate Fortnite, and that's why I don't know anything about it. Corey, did you uh, read up in any of that stuff? Uh, I've heard things about it. I also am not a fan of Fortnite. I think that it's a plague upon the gaming landscape, and it needs to go away. <laughs> no, but, no, no, uh... that's Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, you're not wrong on that. Uh, by the way, Raid Shadow Legends, you want to sponsor my Twitch channel. I'm open to it. Hey, don't worry, don't worry. This whole this whole conversation was sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> I, I wanted to do a video where it's Raid Shadow Legends, and then I, I in the middle of the Raid Shadow Legends commercial, play another Raid Shadow Legends commercial. <laughs> um, uh, as far as uh, Epic and Apple are concerned, I do feel pretty much the same way that you do. That the situation is just. Two trillion dollar companies trying to be jerks to each other for lack of better terms and it's only hurting gamers it's not hurting either company per se yeah because uh i believe epic said they lost 60 percent of their apple players but the moment there's an update to the entire system uh the cross play ends for those people if they haven't already uh those people aren't going to be able to update their games anymore so bugs will be any new bugs are going to just stick around because that's the way it is because epic can't i mean they can but they probably won't just leave those people in the lurch because they're stuck on you know a version previous but it ends up being an argument over if the google and apple stores are considered monopolistic uh, because it's first off, you can install non Google Store apps to your Android, but Apple, you cannot install non Apple apps. But most people find the workaround for Android to be more difficult than it is to just, you know, to download the apps normally through the store. So the argument is on both counts is uh, there are no alternatives. Uh, and uh, I think it's more about choice and less about the 30% they're taking. But uh, uh, it's, again, a bunch of trillion dollar companies arguing over dumb things. I mean, if I develop something uh, I, and I want to have its own ecosystem, I should be able to do what the hell I want with it. No, okay. I, I have to agree. Because I understand moderating it because you want to make sure, one, you don't end up like the Switch store with shovelware. Oh God! Uh, yeah. <laughs> Two, you don't want to end up like um, the Google Store with uh, shovelware, and uh, three, you want to be able to control that you don't end up with basically adult content. Uh, there was a game that was posted to Steam, uh, I think, last year, where basically it was a game where you handled your business in the back of cars and try not to get caught. So I know exactly. I can't yeah, the name of the game, but I've heard about this. It got pulled because it <laughs> didn't realize that's what the content was. But, uh, and I understand Apple's position. I do. Uh, but I also understand Epic's. Uh, but frankly, I'm, he, the, Apple's letting crossplay happen. Apple, it, it, it's just, I, I, I feel like it could have been handled differently. But also, Apple was giving discounts to certain companies, which shows a little bit of favoritism. And that being, 
either lower your rate or you know, and treat everybody the same or don't give anybody any of the extra perks unless they're somehow offering a service in exchange because, uh, you know, it's just it's unfair otherwise. Agreed. And yeah. unfortunately, the thing is, I don't see that going away. Right. OK, so to wrap it up, um, uh, starting with Alex, do you have anything else you want to, um, to mention? You want to you sell yourself? I mean, your channel, your if you want to sell yourself, that's fine. I don't care. <laughs> no, no, I don't. I, don't I just I want thirty percent of whatever you get. <laughs> I, I I don't get anything. <laughs> All my money is gone. Bills. Okay, so um, so to wrap up, um, essentially your P U R P L three rows, which is actually on the screen here, um, and people can check you out on Twitch. Yes, sir. And what are you currently playing on Twitch? I play most of the time. I play Siege. Okay. And um of course Cory or Navidius, um you can find him on Twitch. What are you playing right now on Twitch? Or is it pretty much anything you feel like? Uh right now I'm playing World of Warcraft pretty much exclusively wow. on Twitch. Yeah. Wow. Um you can find me at <laughs> www.twitch.tv slash invidious underscore eight nine. It's an invidious with spelled out correctly, so I N V I D I O U S. Um, I also do a lot of streaming of Smash Brothers, uh, high level gameplay. And if I actually can motivate myself to get back into it when this COVID situation starts dying down, I might give competitive Pokemon another shot. I, uh, I'm a two times world qualifier player and I used to play very hardcore. That's how I built my channel up. So, yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, it was just funny. Um, Alex is also a pretty decent uh, Smash Brothers player. Oh, yeah, yeah. he actually has won I, first and second place in a number of tournaments that I was participating in. I've so. won most of his turn. I've won most of his tournaments. I lost to uh, ri- uh, a Richter player, and I shouldn't have. And he got d- smacked around by a Rob player. But then I was like, "Yo, let me play your Rob." And then I smacked him around. I'm like. I shouldn't have lost to this at all. What's going on? But I, yes, I competed uh, heavily in Smash 4 and Smash Ultimate for a bit. Uh, Smash 4, I did travel out of state numerous times. I've gone to Big House. Uh, I've gone to Evo. Um, played out in Michigan a few times. Uh, I've met a uh, numerous amount of uh, world's best players um, I've met Tweak. I've met, uh, I've, I mean, I've also played not just Smash Brothers, but I also played Street Fighter at a high level, uh, okay. at a, at a current, at my current rate, I played Dragon Ball Z at, at the highest level I can. Possibly. We're talking fighters? Yes. Yeah, that's, fighters. That, that's the one. I, I love Roshi fighters. just came out. I'm so excited about it. <sighs> yes. Roshi. I, okay. Here's my opinion on Roshi. Cause I've been playing him for three days now. Actually, I've been playing him since he dropped out on the 16th. So I've been playing him for four days straight. He is definitely everyone. Everyone's thought of him in the community was Roshi's going to be a troll character. They're just messing with us. no, Roshi is the most complex character in the entire game. No one else has a move set like him. He can't super dash. He, I mean, he's got a, like a com- he's got two command grabs. He says like two of them. He's got like this electric beam, which you can't. It's unblockable. And then he's got you're very sleepy from <laughs> the anime. And I'm like, it's just Roshi himself is a whole another is a whole another character. I personally do not like playing him. He just takes a lot of muscle memory because this character just, his combos are insane. He looks cool and he's just, no, he's not what you expected him to be at all. Let me ask you a question going back to Smash a little bit. Who's your Smash main? Uh, Smash 4, I mained Ryu. Um, I was just, I was a big fan of Street Fighter at the time too. So a lot of the time was I would literally walk around with a Ryu bandana, tie it up when I got serious, and then I would probably just start smacking kids around. 
<laughs> yeah. That's Rio's way, smacking kids around. It's up till every day, chicken winging all yep. the way through until I actually met Kamui. Um, shout outs to him and everyone else in the Smash community who like beat the living crap out of me f- to become where I was at the time. I almost beat him and moved my way up in winners, but he just he sent me down and it was definitely one he- heck of a fight, I'll tell you that much. But uh an ultimate uh after they just nerfed Ryu to the ground, and I don't care how many times people say, Oh, he's got a buff now, he's got a buff now. You can you can heavy jab and assure you now. I don't care. He's not the same character he used to be. He's actually a very weak character, and he's not what he used to be, considering that half the cast is sword fighters. Hello. <laughs> no, it was the tag. No more final. Uh, was it no more fire emblem? No, no fire. More yeah, fire no more fire emblem. emblem. Just I Andy disagree Gordon. wholeheartedly. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> let's just let's just go through every fire emblem game and add them all. To sh- let's just have a fire emblem fighting game. And not call it Super Smash Brothers. They, uh, I feel like Arc System could do a good job with that if if Fire Nintendo Emblem would be wasn't open a to Nintendo it. game. Um, you also I, get, have to get intelligent systems on board too. True, I mean, but you can also look at Guilty Gear. You can look at uh, Blaze Blue Cross Bag Tat ta- Cross Tag Battle. Those games have phenomenal art. Grand <laughs> Blue Fantasy. Oh man. They're great games. Their mechanics are amazing. And the graphics have just come out super nice. So I feel like Fire Emblem would come out as a really good fighting game if Arc System was to work with it. It came out um, as a good Warriors game already from Koei Tecmo. They didn't. They just released an, uh, They just released a DLC for that, didn't they? Or no? It was no, like Warriors they, 8 or something like that, wasn't it? That was Hyrule Warriors I was thinking of. Oh, I have Hyrule Warriors on the Wii U. I love that game. They're releasing a new one, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah they are. One for Breath yeah. of the Wild. Yeah. That's right, yeah. But, um, yeah, Smash Ultimate, I actually first started off with Chrom and DDD. Um, and then after that, I think I ran DDD and Fox. Okay. And that's when I just stopped playing after that. I was just like, I, I can't compete in this game no more. I said, this game stresses me out too much. I don't have Feel any that. fun. I just don't have fun with it anymore because of all the sword fighters. And then they're like, hey, let's add a character named Ling Ling from the boxing game who's also a spacey character. You can't come near me. <laughs> uh, as far as I am I go, my mains have been pretty much Shulk exclusively the whole way through. But I also dab a little bit in Byleth and Roy from Fire Emblem. <laughs> 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 you're they're the one he, he hates I'm, okay yeah, yeah, I'm the I player play, that you hate i play yeah. all sword characters because <laughs> i play mario and captain falcon so falcon punch okay um good. okay so Corey, uh did you because you played um oh crap sword and shield uh yeah. did you play through the dlc already uh i started it and within 10 minutes i put it down and said not worth my time you see, I uh, I stopped uh, on Sword and Shield right I'm right at the, the the final four because I decided to go into Sun and Moon and start moving things forward so I can fill the Pokédex out on uh, on um, the Pokemon. I want to say it's not Bank, it's not Box, uh, Pokemon Home. That's it. Because yeah. I was told that if you fill the Pokédex out in Pokemon Home, you get something special. And uh, so I've been working towards doing that because, um, as you know, I was an organizer for Pokemon. So um, I would buy the Sun and Moon game or Ultra Sun and Moon, whatever, to organize the events. But I wasn't actually playing anything. I would just get to the the second island and save. That way I can get access to the online stuff. Uh, So I I actually been spending the time doing it. Now I'm going through the wormholes. I've actually gone through the Elite Four. Uh, Funny story. I was playing the Elite Four. I had gotten to go against a uh, uh, dude. Um, oh, oh, fudge. Um, I can see his face. He's the uh, the Hakuna's grandson. Uh, he had won the Yeah, how? He won the Elite Four. I'm playing him. Uh, the last two Pokemon we have is both of our Lycanrocs. Uh, he hits me, and my Lycanroc had that... Um, I had the belt on him that prevented, that allowed him to take all the way but one damage, and his like a rock was half powered. I'm like, oh my! I, I I was like, oh please let me win. I uh, go off and do my. Um, I held on to my uh, my, um, my mega move or I forget what it's called. I'm already Z move. 
Z move. Yeah. I, I did it with, you know, it was like, I know this is probably not going to hurt him too much, but this is the only move I have left. Knocked him out and won with one, le- one hit point left. I was like, Oh, is not oh, the best feeling. <laughs> oh my God. I was like, oh. I, and uh, I, it's just, um, I play video games and then rarely do I get so excited. Uh, but uh, I had, I, I couldn't play the game for another two or three days. I was like, okay. I, that, I felt like my heart just, oh. Too much excitement. Yeah, I, I'm old, man. I, I yell at the grass to get off the grass. <laughs> uh, well, don't go looking at the trees in Sword and Shield, then. No, I look at the sun and tell it to stop. It, okay, if, so, if you honestly look at those trees in Sword and Shield, they have Nintendo 64 level textures on them. It's bad. Uh, um, I do like. I know when I get like close to it, it kind of like uh, it weirdly like fades, at, like just pixel art. Basically, is what it is as you go through it. And there's and, tons of pop in too. Yeah, that that it, that is weird. And I and if they do do a new Nintendo Switch, hopefully that type of thing will be resolved. I I think it's because what the Switch does is it will load the local memory, and since it's streaming the memory, it will it maybe not get if you especially if you're riding the bike at the top speed, it, it can't keep up. So it will it will load things as you're going, and that's the yes pop up. That is the problem. But uh, thank you guys for uh, talking with me today, and uh, thanks to everybody for watching. Uh, don't forget that the pre orders for the Xbox is, starts on the twenty second. Um, good luck with that. I suspect it will be a cluster F. Uh, I'm already ready. <laughs> <laughs> Get my butt ready. Uh, so, uh, anyway, anybody, if you're watching, um, if you have any comments or questions, please post them in the comments. And, uh, again, thank you for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks for having us. Deuces. Thank you for checking out our content. Before you leave, please remember to click like and then subscribe. If you want to receive notifications, do not forget to enable them by clicking on the bell. Then afterwards, check out our social media at Hasledgenet and our website at hasledge.net.